You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simiu, and I'm joined by the brilliant uh, Casey Bourne, my co-host. Casey, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Can't complain. Arsenal won, the men yeah. won, the women won, everybody wins. What more do you Academy. want? Academy, <laughs> good weekend, good weekend. Yeah. It was a good weekend indeed. Uh, welcome to our Arsenal Women's Podcast. This is episode two. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who tuned into the first one because I didn't expect the numbers, especially on the audio downloads, to be anywhere near what they were, uh, which is fantastic. It was our first episode. I appreciate that we haven't previously done Arsenal women's content, so wondered how it would go down. But as we said on the on the first show, this is something that me and Casey have been talking about for a while, really wanted to do, so delighted that it's uh, got off to a great start and uh, long may it continue. Um, the only place to start really is uh, is at the Medeski Stadium. Arsenal women handed Reading a drubbing in the WSL on Sunday, a 4-0 win with goals from Jem Beattie, Beth Mead, and of course, a brace. Surprise, surprise, from Vivian Miedemar. Um, Casey, really dominating performance from Arsenal again. And I know we talked about maybe not getting carried away off the back of that Chelsea game because it was the first game. But there are real encouraging signs, aren't there, that Arsenal can indeed push on and, and at least challenge for the uh, WSL title this season. Yeah, for sure. And I didn't expect coming off the back of the Chelsea victory and then, you know, Champions League, it, I, I was not expecting a 4-0 win. Um, I thought they'd be a bit more tired than that, but they would just go, go, go again. It's it's nice to see, but yeah, I would just wonder at what point, like, is it going to hit them? <laughs> Do you worry a little bit about Arsenal women maybe burning out a little bit early this season? Because of course we're in the Champions League again and we'll talk about the Champions League draw a little bit later on, but one thing that's really clear when watching Jonas side of all side is that the level of intensity is much higher than it was previously. So are you worried that this will catch up with them over the course of the season? Yeah, I think a little. Just just because it's such a different style of play, the tempo is like stepped up another level that we didn't see under Montemuro. So I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of expecting it, but it could take us by surprise and they might just have already got been at that level it's just that they weren't coached at it as such so I don't know we'll see but hopefully it it can not play, hit a plateau and they'll just carry on getting better and yeah keep the intensity up yeah for sure and it's really really important to use the squad isn't it in a situation like this and I'm I think kind of reading between the lines in some of the interviews that Jonas has given you get that impression that he does believe that this is a squad game and he will be making changes and he will be rotating things. Obviously, there are some players that are more key than others, just like with any team, but I think you will see him uh, try and maximise the squad as a whole. And I think he'll, you know, we're talking about it. I'm sure he'll be aware of that risk and I guess of that danger. Um, yeah. Let's start with let's start with Miedemar because uh, she hit the 100 goals mark for Arsenal uh, last week with a hat-trick against Slavia Prague in the uh, UEFA Champions League. Uh, we were waxing lyrical about her last week, but I mean, every time I watch her play, I'm in awe of, obviously not, obviously how good she is, but I, I, I just find the way she takes up the right position all the time. And now that we're obviously at the start of this season, continuing to find her in the right places all the time, I think it's 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 really incredible and really... You know, it, it's something that could make the difference for Arsenal in, in their pursuit of the WSL title and, and, of course, the Champions League. Because I'm struggling to see a better striker in women's football than Vivian Miedema on the planet. And, and limp, granted, you know, there, there are people with a greater depth of knowledge in the women's game than myself. But she just looks a level above anything else I've seen. She is. She's just... It, it's almost like every time you watch her you're still surprised by 
just how good she is like even though we all know and we see it week in week out but it's every single game she pulls something out the bag whether it's a goal or not just like you say her positioning the focus that she has is it's mad I I just always in shock when I watch her um yeah I've I've not seen any player like it um but like you say I, there, there may have been some but for me obviously being an Arsenal fan I'm, I'm yet to see anyone better than her she's I almost wish that we could bottle up her determination and put it in other players because I don't know I don't I don't see it in many other players in the WSL let alone the Arsenal team Hopefully we can keep hold of her though going forward. That is kind of the big thing, isn't it? It's a big worry. It's a big concern. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. There's so much talk about it in the interviews with Jonas, especially and with Viv herself. It's like almost every time I'm reading something new about you know whether she's going to extend or, but really it's going to come down to whether Arsenal win anything. So can't really blame her either way. No, agreed. Uh, another player who's really been impressing and who Jonas has been speaking very highly about is uh, is Beth Mead. Now, Beth Mead, of course, on the score sheet provider as well at the weekend. And I took a quote from Jonas's uh, post-match press conference. He said, we have a great squad, but Beth Mead has had an extremely good period and has been a really positive surprise for me to work with, which suggests he didn't realise what a top draw player she was prior to coming into the club and working with her on a daily basis. Are you surprised, though, to see Beth Mead sort of hitting this level? No, not at all. She's always had it in her. I think she just needed to have some momentum behind her. Like, I'm not surprised that Jonas is surprised because, you know, for international football, she's never really got going. Um, she wasn't selected for the Olympics. It's, it, so in that sense, you know, she doesn't have that much of a presence compared to other people. But no, Beth Mead's always been one player for me who can just create magic wherever she goes. Um, I'm just glad that, you know, even with Heath coming in and Nikita Paris, it's, yeah, it's nice to see her still getting a chance because she could have easily have been pushed out of that squad. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned the um, the international stuff and that it's not really happened for Beth Mead up until this point. And, and Jonas Eideval alluded to that as well. He said, I hope she can keep her form when she gets the England shirt on so she can show she is a great player at national team level again. So almost kind of urging her and, and willing her on to go on and really kind of make her mark on the international game. Um, he also talked about how Arsenal had worked in the build up to this game on exposing Reading in the fullback areas, which, you know, we talk a lot about the, the intensity level with which Idaval's team play and the fact that that's all gone up a notch. But it seems like strategically he is he is very switched on as well because he talked a lot about the things he identified with Chelsea. A lot of that came to fruition. And I know it's easy after a win to say, yeah, we worked on this, this and this. But he does or has up until this point, in my opinion, strategically pretty much got everything right so I, I wasn't surprised to see that he'd, he'd sussed Reading out in that sense and, and made sure that Arsenal capitalised on that particular area tactically he is very good isn't he yeah from what we've seen like um it's almost as if like he's doubting him not doubting himself but in what he comes out with in you know his interviews saying tactically I haven't got it spot on well to us he has because you know, against Chelsea, it was very, it was a tactical win, in my opinion. And then against Reading, he's he's assessed how they played against United. He's looked at their full backs and how we could exploit them. And that's exactly what the girls did. So to us, it seems like he's got everything tactically spot on. But yeah, I don't know what he's, he's talking about because to us, it seems great. So I can't complain. Feels like he's playing it down, doesn't it? Like he's almost yeah. trying to... He, he doesn't want to take too much pressure on. He, he wants to keep stressing the point that, or if not directly, but indirectly, that he's still new to the WSL, that this is still a new job and that there's still a long way to go. But the early signs are just so encouraging. I quite like it as well because, you know, he's not come in and said, I'm going to do this, this and this, and it's gone wrong. It's almost as if he's keeping his heart close to his chest, but it, 
it just seems to be working and the girls seem to have a good understanding of what he's after so yeah it's it's a good match overall really yeah for sure we've talked about the intensity we've talked about the high press and all that and that there is a clear emphasis isn't there at the moment uh, for the Arsenal women to win the ball higher up the pitch which is actually something we saw from Mikel Arteta's side as well at the weekend maybe he's been watching uh you <laughs> side of his team who knows but God, um it, it, it's just a breath of fresh air the style of football it's so good to see a team trying to play on the front foot being aggressive squeezing teams up and, and naturally you win the ball higher up the pitch you've got uh, less distance to travel and, and you're in on goal, hopefully, uh, quicker. But are you surprised at how quickly the team have adapted? Because I know there's been a lot of new players coming in, but we're seeing players who were part of the squad previously having flipped their game quite dramatically to fit into what Eideval's doing. So are you surprised at how quickly his ideas have, have been sort of absorbed by those who were already at the club? Yeah, that's the one that's the one thing that I'm finding more and more as the season goes on. I'm just constantly surprised and and wondering how almost they've coped with it because before they were, you know, they were made to be this patient team in terms of how they press. It was always waiting to press, but now it's just so aggressive, so far up the pitch. It's like maybe they had it in their game all along. They just, you know, obviously if you're told differently, you're told differently, but no, it's really nice because They've got the players who are there ready to pounce. They're a quick team. They're skillful on the ball. So, yes, yeah, I think it's just about, you know, exploiting teams like they have been doing so far. And it's, it's working. Obviously, you can't do it against every team. But so far, so good. Yeah, for sure. The uh, the 4 0 win over Reading, obviously, massive Arsenal 100% record in the WSL so far this season. But taking it back a little bit as well, Arsenal cruised through to the Champions League uh, group stages, didn't they, with that win over Slavia Prague? Uh, what are you kind of eyeing up as the, the one for Arsenal this season? Obviously, league football is the, is the bread and butter. Winning the domestic title is, for a lot of people, the, the most important thing. But do you feel like looking at the Champions League as well, that Arsenal have a real opportunity to go on and make their mark on the European stage? I I do. I'm a little hesitant to fully be like, yes, because there's qualities about a lot of the teams that are just that bit more, I don't know, maybe it's worked because Arsenal have been lacking in, in this European contest previously, but I don't see why now this is the season I think that they could do it. Um, They've got the squad depth, which I think is going to be a crucial part in it. It's just a case of whether the pressure gets to them or not, I think. Um, I think the draw has been quite kind to them, if I'm if I'm being honest. Um, could have been a lot worse. Group A was was a tough one, but yeah, I I think this could be the season to do. It. I think they'll be excited as opposed to feeling more of pressure on them. But yeah, we can only wait and see how it goes. They have been drawn against Barcelona, which is kind of the the, the real difficult one. They're obviously Hoffenheim and H B. Uh, HB Kurga, I think that's how you say it, uh, of Denmark are the uh, are the fourth side in that group. Do you feel like Arsenal should be looking to sneak through with Barcelona? Is that the? I'm not sure that Arsenal are better than Barcelona to say that we expect them to win the group, but it feels like looking at that group, it is a group that they could progress from, and and sneaking through with Barca feels about right. Yeah, I think so, but I think. I've been reading, I've seen Hoffenheim play a few times and I've been reading online today. They have one player in particular, Jewel Brand. Um, she's 18. She plays out on the left wing, but she can play anywhere. Been smashing it for Germany. So I feel like I don't want to get too caught up in saying, no, Arsenal can breeze through because yeah, it's Arsenal. There's, I feel like there's always something, but <laughs> no, it. I'd rather play Barcelona than the likes of Leon PSG. So, to be honest, it's all right. I think we can be quietly confident about it. Just quietly, though. Just yeah. quietly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why I said it. Yeah, never confident. But as well, I think when you look at, on the continent, I think in general, all, all right, the, the WSL is, is a good standard. But I do think that women's football has been a little bit more advanced in some of these other countries for longer, if that makes sense, yeah. you know, especially in the Scandinavian countries, especially in, you know, France, 
Um, you know, you look at Barcelona, another one, you know, I just think that we're, we're kind of, the WSL has become a big deal now and, and it's probably, you know, it's been too long since, or, or it's been in the eyes of people for a while, but it's never had the focus that it's got now. But we've kind of, because of that, because of the the low profile, if you like, of the women's game up until now in the UK, we've almost dismissed actually how high profile it is in some other countries and how advanced they are. And and so we look at our league and we say Arsenal, Chelsea, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, should breeze through the Champions League. But that's not really the case, is it? It's you know, it's a it's going to be a really really tough competition. And now I've talked myself into believing that actually Arsenal have a bigger chance of winning the WSL uh, than the Champions League. <laughs> but even so, like, if the Champions, you know, the aim for most teams would generally to be to win the league that you play in week in, week out, as opposed to, obviously, you know, the higher goal would be something like Champions League. So in Arsenal's plan, they would probably like to get back to challenging for the, well, properly challenging for the WSL, winning that title, then they can look onto the likes of the Champions League. Where I'm sure that, you know, everyone would love to go in and win it. But when you're up against teams like Leon, it's it's that bit diff- more difficult. So, yeah, we'll see. But if if they can, they might surprise us with Barcelona. Who knows? Because so far, you wouldn't have said that we would have beaten Chelsea. So, yeah, true, true. And of course, uh, coming up on uh, Sunday, the 26th of September, another massive game for the Arsenal women. Uh, they take on Manchester City. And then just three days later, it's Arsenal versus Spurs in the FA Women's Cup quarterfinal. So the big games are coming thick and fast. We've already played Chelsea in the WSL. We've already had to go through the Champions League qualification. And now Man City, Spurs, a couple of big games coming up. So it's, it's it's just never ending, isn't it? It's quite relentless. But I think the first couple of weeks have, have given us positive signs to say, you know, not necessarily that we're going to go on and win all of those games, but that we can go into those games with a degree of confidence and, and really believe it in, in our own ability, which is, I think, a change from what we saw over the last few years. Because I remember growing up, Arsenal women were always the best, but then you know, there's no denying over the last few years, it's really dropped off. And mm-hmm. it feels to me like Ardevol could be the man to to raise that level again and raise that bar. Yeah, that's that's exactly how I feel. I feel like growing up, it was always Arsenal would the best, like you say. But I think what let them down is squad depth. They just didn't have it, whether it caused injuries, whether, you know, they just needed squad rotation. Now they have the chance to do it. It could, I mean, I... I don't know, it could be the fact that they're just less pressure on players like Miedema or Beth Mead even to to perform. Um, I think the fact that Jonas has managed to bring in these types of players like Tobin Heath, Nikita Paris, it's not even just those two, they're just prolific names that were big already and, and have that experience behind them. Um, it's, it's, I think it's going to be interesting to see how, how they actually do rotate the squad though because so far we we kind of have our set team I feel I don't like what the saying what is it don't fix what's the saying don't fix it if it ain't broke don't fix it that's the one <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's it and that's how I feel it's like I, I don't know why he would make a change but at some stage he's gonna have to so yeah it's uh, like we were talking about it earlier squad depth is is key and sometimes you're gonna have to make those calls I think part of the art of being a manager is, is knowing when to make those calls and, and knowing when you can afford to to change something and when you shouldn't and finding that right balance. Um, one more player I just wanted to talk about quickly was uh, is Frieda Marnham because obviously 22-year-old signed from Linko Pings uh, this summer, Norwegian, um, and she was the captain uh, of the Swedish side last season at just 21 years of age. Um, a really, really talented player, somebody that a lot of clubs had their eyes on. Uh, and Arsenal managed to get that deal done. Um, she started all five of Arsenal's games under Idevall, um, and he's been talking glowingly about her, uh, talking about the fact that she's very, very comfortable with the ball, that she's very intelligent, that he's she's one of those players that he doesn't worry about when he gives her instructions. Um, he says, I give her the broad picture, 
and she gets all of the details right. How impressed have you been with her since she's come into the side? Because uh, to me, she was a, an unknown quantity. That and that's how I felt. I didn't I didn't know much about her I, from what I had read and seen so far. I mean, looked great, but you know, it's a whole different league that she was coming to. So you just never know. But so far, I think she's been the one player who has added a special quality to the team whether it's in her defensive play attack and play I think she's just all over the place like not in a bad way as in she whether she's helping out McCabe or, or the midfield like with Kim Little it's just she's a really special talent I think she's going to be key going forwards um, and she she looks like a real leader as well so it's nice to have that quality in the team um, yeah and she's not that let us down she's not let her team down or Jonas down so far so yeah she's really special so far so good he was also asked post the Reading game about winning the first six games in charge are you kind of looking at it now and thinking not that you want us to lose but that you're at a place where okay it looks great on the surface Arsenal playing really well Arsenal getting results but I don't know about you. I'm I'm really interested in how we're going to respond the first time things don't go well. The first time the result isn't the one that we're after, and and I think that at times tells you a lot more about a manager, doesn't it, and about a group of players than being on a run where it, it seems like everything is is working perfectly, like a well-oiled machine. When you hit that snag, I think that's when you're going to see. Uh, really how good a manager this man is, how good some of these players are and whether Arsenal are strong enough to bounce back straight away, put things right and, and continue their, their sort of charge towards the top of the table. I'm I'm not, again, I'm not saying I want Arsenal to lose. I never want Arsenal to lose, <laughs> but I am kind of sitting here taking a bit of a step back, praising them, but at the same time thinking, I'm going to make my judgments on this team when they go through a difficult moment. Yeah, that's that's almost like how you. It's not like you're waiting for a slip up, but it's almost like you say you want to see how they're going to respond because so far, yeah, they've had challenge a challenge in Chelsea, but there wasn't really anything in the game that suggested things were going to go severely wrong. Um, and to be honest, I'd be interested to see how they do against City. I think that could be the first sort of hiccup in the road for us where we need to see a bit more of a concentration from them. Um, they could have, you know, in the game against Reading, they could have afforded to slack off a little bit. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how it goes wrong and where it goes wrong, because so far it all looks very smooth. And, you know, that was even with the men's team when Arteta came, it was the same. It was like, wow, we've got this new lease of life about us. But yeah, and then, well... Look how that went. So we'll see. I don't think <laughs> it's not going to happen with the women's team. I don't. Think, but I'm just, yeah, I'm curious to see where it goes wrong and how they're going to respond. Yeah, definitely. That would be key, of course. Um, we mentioned the games uh, coming up. We'll be bringing you a reaction, of course, uh, to those games. Maybe we'll try and squeeze in uh, an extra special episode for the FA Women's Cup quarterfinal because that one's a midweek game. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll try and get that sorted and see what we can do. But yeah. Arsenal, Manchester City coming up Sunday, 26th of September. Um, I- I'm thinking of getting down to that one. I might get down there. But it's, the only problem is it's North London Derby Day as well for the men. Gonna, yeah. Mm. Which is, makes it difficult because Even if... Oh, no, I'll, I'll definitely go to... I've already got the season ticket for the men. So it's, <laughs> it's one of those. And I couldn't miss a, a North London Derby for a game against Manchester City. But just looking at it now, yeah, see, it's at the Emirates and it's at 4.30 p.m. Um and of course, the the women's game is at six forty five. So you couldn't even make it. You know, you'd have fifteen no. minutes, twenty minutes between the two games to get from Emirates to Bournemouth. I don't, I don't think that's too achievable. Tight. Too tight. Um, yeah, You'll definitely have to too catch tight. Up on the highlights. Yeah, we'll have to catch up on the highlights. We'll have to watch it back and then uh, and then bring you our reaction <laughs> uh, a little bit later on. This is the problem, isn't it? If you support two teams from the same club in two different competitions, there will yeah. be clashes, unfortunately. But uh, I, strangely enough, I have more faith in them, in the Arsenal women, to do the job against Manchester City than I do Can't in the men against Spurs. 
so do I. <laughs> I'm, yeah. We'll see. As long as any of, uh, as long as the officials on the WSL are all good, then it'll be okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you feel like Man City definitely didn't get the rub of the green yesterday. You feel like they might want to even that out, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, the next game is us. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. As long as they're not looking to go crazy, it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Right. We are going to leave it there. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the second episode of our Arsenal Women's Podcast. Big thank you to Casey once again. Uh, she's the brains behind the, behind the Arsenal Women's Podcast. I've got to say, I'm just asking the questions. But Casey, Hi. how can people uh, follow you on social media and keep up to date with the excellent work that you do? Thank you. Um, I'm at Casey underscore born on literally everything. Um, yeah, find me on there. Mainly Twitter though. Make sure you do so. I'll leave uh, the handle in the description as well. Uh, for those of you uh, who are struggling to find it possibly. And uh, we'll be back very, very soon with more. Until next time, take care and uh, up the Arsenal. Ciao. listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.